Greetings, friends. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program with Dr. Bob Teal. Dr. Teal, does the Bible mention a group of people that would be protected from the Great Tribulation? Yes, it does. Well, is that protection in heaven or on earth? Well, according to the New Testament, yes. it's on the earth. If you go to Revelation chapter 12, starting at verse 13, and I'll be reading from the New King James, we read that when the dragon saw he'd been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman. Verse 14, but the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. She might fly into the wilderness to her place where she's nourished for a time, time, and half a time from the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed out water that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. Earth helped the woman, opened his mouth, swallowed the flood which a dragon spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. He went to make war with the rest of her offspring, those who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So we see two groups of Christians, one of which is protected in the wilderness after Satan is cast to the earth and persecutes them, and then the other who Satan goes after later. Well, where might that place be where they're protected? Maybe in the wilderness in Jordan, such as in Petra. But what if it's, it's not? Some have actually asked me about a place called Basra as being a place of safety. So I did some research on that. I found an article written by uh, Tim McHyde called, Is Petra the Prepared Place of Safety for Israel or You? And he says, uh, will it become the number one safe destination for Israelites in the end time? Some people think it will. Others believe that the Petra will be the place that the true church will be protected in fulfillment of Revelation chapter 12. Some think that the city could hold 144,000 people as a number of Israelite evangelists. The Worldwide Church of God believe that to be 144,000 of their members who'd get there. This has appeal, but if you search the Bible, the name of the city Petra, you won't find it. But you'll find the Greek name for the city, which is Selah. And both Petra and Selah mean rock. As far as how many people can get there, uh, Tim said this is wholly inadequate. He doesn't think he can hold more than 20,000. But he says the main attribute given to the woman at the end is her offspring are the ones who keep God's commandments and have the faith of Jesus. So he says this cannot possibly be the nation of Israel in the end times. And I think he's certainly, absolutely, he's right about that. This is not the nation of Israel being promised protection there. What did Tim McKay say about Basra? He said, like Petra, Basra is part of Jordan. Uh, and he also said that Jordan will be evacuated after the country is laid waste in an attack against Israel. He says, how will we know when it's time to go? God must send some prophet, since no man knows the day the hour. And he thought this would probably happen in the 2020s. Would you agree with Mr. McKay's analysis of the place of safety? I agree that according to various scriptures, Jordan seems to be the place, and that God will likely use a prophet to say when and where to go. But mm -hmm. I disagree with various points, like uh, I do not believe that Jordan's going to be evacuated like that. But I do agree that Revelation 12 is talking about protection of faithful Philadelphian Christians, not the nation of uh, Israel. As far as the old worldwide church of God goes, it said Petra could be the place, not that it would be. As a matter of fact, the late pastor general of the old Worldwide Church of God, Herbert W. Armstrong, wrote, I know many of you, but your hearts are going to Petra as a place of safety during the soon coming Great Tribulation. Well, get your minds off Petra. Brother and I have never said Petra is definitely the place of protection. God will take it. I hope it's not. One reason it could be the place, it's a place nobody else would want to go. Mm -hmm. It would be the most unpleasant, uncomfortable, miserable place you could go, end quote. <clears throat> Well, so carnally speaking, Petra is not a place many would pick, but God may have chosen it, or at least somewhere relatively near it or like it. Are you suggesting that, uh, contrary to Mr. McHyde's assertion, Petra is indeed large enough to be the place? Petra is certainly large enough for the Philadelphia Christians to be protected. And they're the only ones promised to be protected from the beast. But it also covers more area than the small rock carve area many think of. So it could be it, or this part of it could be the place. As far as Petra Basra go, there's several clues in the Bible that suggest a Jordanian location makes sense. But this part of this is based upon where the place of protection is not. That's an interesting way to approach the subject. 
where might the place of protection not be? Well, Jeremiah wrote, Jeremiah chapter 4, starting in verse 5, declare in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, blow the trumpet, gather together, assemble yourselves, let us go to the fortified cities, set up the standard towards Zion, take refuge, do not delay. I will bring disaster from the north, a great destruction. So we see, don't want to be north of Jerusalem, Judea, that's not a place you'd want to be. And this is consistent with what Jesus told his followers when they see abomination desolation spoken of. They're saying something uh, is coming from the north. This is a reference, I believe, to the king of the north. And it's suggesting some of God's people will be in Judea, Jerusalem, uh, by this time, perhaps because they were in Europe and they had to flee early. And in Luke chapter 20, starting verse 21, uh, Jesus said some of his people would need to flee there. He said, when you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, you know, desolation is near, but those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Those who are midst of her depart, let not those who are in this country enter her. So we see the place of safety is not Jerusalem or Judea. Mm -hmm. um, we also, in Zechariah chapter 2, starting in verse 6, it says, Flee from the land of the north, says the Lord, up Zion, escape you who dwell with the daughter of Zion, and excuse me, the daughter of Babylon. Daughter of Babylon is a European Babylon, so again, you're not supposed to go north to Europe. Now, in Isaiah 33, we find out that those who uh, walk uprightly, starting verse 16, 15, 16, uh, will dwell in, on high. His place of defense will be a fortress of rocks. Bread will be given him. Water will be sure. So God will make sure to food and water. And Isaiah 45, verse 20 said, Assemble yourselves and come draw near together, you who've escaped the nations. So there's fortress of rocks for people who've escaped. So people are not being protected in their houses like some think. Mm -hmm. Now, in Zephaniah, Zephaniah chapter 2, we read some interesting things, starting in verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yes, gather together, O undesirable nation, before the decree is issued. I believe that's the decree to flee. For the day passes like chaff, before the day the Lord's fierce anger comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you meek of the earth, who have upheld his justice. Seek righteousness, seek humility. It may be that you will be hidden from the day of the Lord's anger. And I think the decree is going to be issued by a church leader, who I believe will be part of the continuing church of God. That's going to happen after Matthew 24, 14, the gospel being preached, the world's witness is fulfilled. The Jewish sacrifices are stopped and the abomination of desolation set up, as Jesus said in Matthew 24. It remains my prayer that those who are Philadelphian Christians who are scattered in other groups will assemble together with us before it's too late. Furthermore, in Zephaniah, he talks about uh, Gaza will be uh, forsaken and woe to the inhabitants of the seacoast. So that's not the right location. So you're not going to be going uh, uh, west of uh, Jerusalem either. So if you get rid of the north, uh, the, the, the west, and actually some of the south, it pretty much leaves the southeast. And so that points to a place perhaps in uh, Jordan. Uh, David uh, talked about a place in Psalm 27, 5. In the secret of his tabernacle, he shall hide me, he'll set me upon a rock. That word is Selah, which is, again is uh, uh, Petra. So it's a place of... Uh, protection, a sila of escape for David. Jesus said to pray, Matthew 24, 20, their flight would not be in the Sabbath or in the winter. And that also consistent with Revelation 12, 14, is talking about an actual place to go, which is on uh, the earth. Uh, Petra is a harsh uh, desert. Um, and, but it's mainly south and slightly east of Jerusalem. Basra is also the right general direction, as are other locations in Jordan. Uh, it's also possible the actual place of protection could simply be near Petra or part of its outskirts, or perhaps maybe even a location as far from it. But what about Basra and Petra being the exact place of protection? Well, in Jeremiah chapter 49, starting verse, verse 22, we read, Behold, he shall come up and fly like an eagle will spread his wings over Basra. The heart of the mighty men of Edom in that day will be like the heart of a woman in birth pangs. 
So we see eagle's wings, and that's what we read in Revelation uh, 12, that uh, the church will be protected that way. And also in Micah chapter 2, verse 12, we read, I surely gather you, O Jacob, all of you, and I'll bring you together, the remnant of Israel. Together I do set a flock of Basra in a drove in the midst of its pasture. It makes noise because of a man. So we see some possible connections uh, to Basra, but right now I'm not thinking it's going to be there, but mm -hmm. I haven't eliminated it because it's in the right general place. But I've also long wondered about if Petra could be the actual place. One of the reasons is that uh, the carved part is actually like most important or one of the most important tourist destinations in Jordan. So, you know, were they, were they going to want us to go th go there? Uh, on the other hand, um, there are caves there and there's indications that we're going to be protected in, in caves, but there are also caves near Petro outside of the carved area as well. It's also possible maybe the true Christians, Philadelphia Christians are going to stay in Petro for a time and then go elsewhere. And it's something I've written about before as well. You have, you've mentioned a group you refer to as Philadelphian Christians several times. Tell us a little bit more about the Philadelphia Christians. Well, in the New Testament, it shows not all Christians are going to be physical protection. The one specific group that is promised protection for the Great Tribulation is found in the book of Revelation talking about the Philadelphian Christians. Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 7, Jesus said, And to the church... In Philadelphia, right? These things says he who is holy, he who is true, he who is the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. I set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have a little strength. You've kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I'll make those who are the synagogue of Satan, who said they are Jews but are not, indeed, I'll make them to come worship before your feet, and to know that I've loved you. Because you've kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you for the hour of trial, which will come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. And this hour of trial we're talking about begins with the Great Tribulation. Are there Christians then that are not Philadelphian Christians? Yes. Revelation chapter 2 and 3, there's different churches that Jesus speaks to. He warns uh, uh, three of them that they're going to have problems with the Great Tribulation or, or not knowing what's going to happen. So there's other groups there. But specifically, I'm going to reread Revelation 12, verse 17. We read, And the dragon was enraged with a woman, this is the Philadelphian portion of the church, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. And these are Christians. We know they're Christians. Why? Because they keep the commandments of God and they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So there are two groups of end-time Christians, one group that's protected, the other that's not. And Revelation 3 tells us which group gets protected. Now, as far as where this place is, as I mentioned before, when you look at where it's not, it's not the coastland, which means they don't go to the west, it's not up north, and when you look at the location of the Bible points to, we're talking about somewhere uh, south or east or southeast of uh, Israel or Jerusalem, and that points to a place in Jordan. It's most likely going to be a place in Jordan. Could be near Petra, could be Petra, could be Vaz or, or near that. Uh, but the reality is there is a place of protection for the Philadelphian Christians. The Bible, the Bible specifically says that. So don't just think because you're a Christian, you've got automatic protection. You're going to want to be a Philadelphian Christian to be protected from what's about to happen. Thank you, Dr. Teal. For more interviews with Dr. Teal, in addition to written as well as audio articles, visit our website at BibleNewsProphecy.net. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program. Over.